Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of checking out one of your guys solar systems. So now we're on episode 151, the first episode of this year actually and the first video um, of this year as well. But without further ado guys we're going to get straight into it like we normally do. So let's do this. So yeah the, the simulation we have today is some of the user uh, ErrorXD in Discord. So I must have thank you to him for sending it in and it's called the Aster Heteos system. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it should be here because it begins with the letter A. Right, here we go. Right, okay, we've got a lot of reading. Right, so let's go uh, labels, orbits. We'll just go orbits then. Okay, right, where are we? Okay, this looks pretty big. So, uh, uh, yep, let's see here. I'm guessing those are the planets with the blacked out trail. Oh, we can see a galaxy over there. Right, uh, this is the Aster uh, Heteos star system. I really hope I'm saying that right. A relatively young planetary system located in a dwarf planet or a dwarf galaxy, 950 stars, barely 1,200 light years in diameter, drifting along the local group. It was discovered by humans on the year 12,348. Okay. The first star, Aster, is a yellow dwarf with almost the same mass as the sun, if only 4% less massive, although it has the largest body in the system. It only has three planets orbiting it. Okay, right, so let's try and find those uh, planets. I'm guessing we've got that blacked out trail glitch, so we can't actually see where they are. So I'm just trying to see, look around see if I can find anything, because yeah, there's a bug in the game at the moment where trails on objects are just blacked out see i think i just saw one there's one here for instance so what we're gonna have to do unfortunately we're gonna have to scrap the background just so we can find the uh darn planets so let's go to uh yeah background we're just gonna have to put it right color just so we can see where they are see look, there we go so Aster b for instance and so now we can head here right so the there's only uh four or is it was it was uh three planets orbiting it okay so we've got uh Aster b here and then Aster B1. So it's got a huge gas object orbiting there. I mean, they're almost the same size. Must be a binary sort of planetary uh, thing going on here. So looking at it there, we can see it's got some blue underneath that uh, sort of cloudy colored atmosphere. So that's what it looks like underneath. But yeah, there we are. So yeah, cloudy. So almost like a Venus sort of color of uh, stuff there. And obviously underneath it's a um, little bit of our oceans going on. See some little green islands as well on it as well. Looking good. Right. And then the gas giant as well. Good old uh, orange, looks like a randomly generated gas giant, really. But yeah, there you go. So those two are together. So that's Aster B and B1. All right, zooming out. So we have Aster C next. Okay. So all the way down here. Okay, so this object looks pretty dark here, almost like a Trace 2B. So very, very dark shades of brown on it right there. So there we go. And then the third planet. So it should be Aster D. Is there an Aster D? Uh, I'm not seeing a yesterday. I see a Barry Center in the next star out. Maybe, maybe the three planets, or maybe um, the third one is actually just the moon, or the bi I should say the binary planet system. So these two here, so B and B1. I'm guessing those are the three planets we've just checked out. Okay, so we've done all those. Right now, moving on. So we have a Barry Center here that's holding two stars, center of gravity. Right, and then on that to the second star here. So we've got some more reading. Right. Uh, Hetarios, I really hope I'm saying that right, is an orange dwarf that is located at a very far distance from its companion. It has about 72.1% the mass of the sun. It has four planets along with their moons orbiting it. Okay. So the first body, right, so let's uh, go over here. So B1. So here we go. So it's a captured dwarf planet. That oh, so that's one, that one. Okay. So here's the big planet itself. So that's uh, object B. Okay. Right, and then, yeah, on to this um, one over here. So, B1. It's a captured dwarf planet that possesses an atmosphere made out of 60% nitrogen, 31% water vapor, and 9% carbon monoxide. This dwarf planet used to have a CO2 and nitrogen atmosphere, but it almost collided with uh, the gas giant there before uh, being gravitationally bound. This gave it a good amount of atmospheric hydrogen, which reacted with the CO2 to make water vapor and carbon monoxide. Apart from covering the surface with a thin layer of graphite, we could see some sort of red areas. Um, on it as well, which is looking um, really cool there. Yeah, you can just uh, see on there. That's cool. Right, I like it. It's a thin layer of graphite. Okay. So, and then we have B2, small asteroid um, over here. Due to its eccentric orbit, it becomes a satellite at B1 for a few weeks before it escapes B1's uh, hill sphere. So, we've got, got the good old little asteroid in there as well. Right, moving on. So, we have Object C now. A habitable Earth like planet with green vegetation. A very humanoid intelligent species lives here. Um, and was helped by a human who stumbled across it in exchange for permission to live and send more people in. They are currently a type 2.1 civilization. Okay. That's cool. Right, so here it is here. So 
is that green vegetation any any green i'm spotting i'm not seeing many green at the moment uh let's just go ahead and have a look underneath the atmosphere there okay where's the vegetation there's no vegetation on it at the moment i think that's just probably because the versions of the games are a little out of place but yeah there you go there is that world there right and then it has a moon here so c1 is an asteroid orbiting very close it might uh, be turned into a small ring system eventually okay very nice indeed very close to the planet obviously there as well Right, moving on, we have got C2 over here. A terraform moon with a natural magnetic field. Ooh, okay. Can we actually, uh, we should be able to turn that on, can't we? Um, I can't remember how you turn on the magnetic field stuff, is it? Com is it composition, I think you do it on? Aha, there you go, magnetic field, look at that. Looking cool, so natural magnetic field. Awesome stuff indeed there, okay. Right, next up we have C3. Uh, it used to be a very methane and water-rich planet, but it collided with uh, Object B and lost two-thirds uh, of its mass, although it managed to gain a small hydrogen atmosphere thanks to the collision having the methane and water contribute to a deep blue colour. It then got captured by Object C a few weeks later. Okay, so there it is there. So we can see, yeah, mostly just uh, hydrogen water um, amount now. 13% hydrogen on it, but it still remains as a rocky, not a gas object. Interesting. Right, so moving on. So, uh, we have yeah, C3 there. Right, so where are we heading uh, next? Uh, yes, yeah, so C3. All right, uh, object D. Where's D? Over here. Okay, big jump. Right. It's a sub terror with a very thin atmosphere composed of argon, CO2, and sulfur dioxide. Its surface and atmosphere are purple thanks to a high concentration of amethyst. Ooh, uh, amethyst dust. It has lakes and rivers of sulfur dioxide. It is theorized that silicon based life will rise in five million years considering the chemical reactions happening in there. Oh, yeah, you can see the purple atmosphere on it as well. Very nice indeed. Awesome stuff. Right, uh, D1 is a product of one billion year old collision. It is primarily made out of water and uh, or water and water ice. It is extremely thin water vapor. Atmosphere holds a subsurface ocean. Confirmed microscopic multicellular organisms. Hey, awesome. Right, uh, D1, and then we have D2. Mars sized object that manages to shift the barrier center away from the parent planet. Uh, it's called a binary planet system. This is like Pluto and its moon Charon. So the center of gravity isn't actually in the central planet. It's actually the Matuna. Because this is quite a large moon in comparison to its parent planet, as we can see, like Pluto and its moon Charon. So, yeah, the barrier center, if there was one here, would definitely not be uh, inside Object D. It'd probably be in the middle uh, here, somewhere slightly closer to the bigger, or uh, the one with bigger mass. But yeah, there you go. It's quite a cool looking moon as well. This looks like a custom custom uh, texture maybe i do like that reddish area in there that's, that's pretty cool i like very really nice so default so that's what it looks like normally okay so it's got yes definitely some sort of custom stuff going on it right so that is a d2 right okay there we go so that's all of those ones done okay so it's actually got some okay it's got some bios for the uh planets around the first star so we can actually hop back and quickly check those guys out again Right, so yeah, we have B over here, so Aster B. It's an habitable world mostly populated by humans. It is green, vegetation is very similar to Earth overall. So yeah, that's this world. We saw the green. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, we were here earlier. If you want to have another quick look underneath. So yeah, there is your green vegetation. Very ocean heavy, as we can see. So looking good. Right, and then uh, Aster B1. It's a gas dwarf with 0.25 Earth masses. It is in a binary orbit with Aster B and causes tides 11 times bigger than Earth's on the planet. Well, I mean, I, don't, I can see why. I mean, this thing is massive compared to its parent planet. I mean, they're almost the same size. Uh, we've got uh, radius. We'll go to kilometers. Uh, 5,244. And this one is five or 6,052. So, yeah, they are very, very close in size. I mean, yeah, that 0.25 Earth masses has got 0.8. So, it has more mass. But, yeah, that thing is still quite a big presence being that close to the parent planet. So, yeah, that would be some uh, pretty crazy tidal waves. Definitely don't live on the coast. That would be my recommendation. So, yeah, there are those two. Awesome stuff. And then, yeah, B1 was the um, gas dwarf. Pretty cool. And then the last object, which we already visited earlier. So this is a super Jupiter with no moon. It used to be an ice giant super Neptune before colliding with another gas world in the process. It consumed all of both planets' moons, leaving it alone in its orbit. So this is the remnant of a collision. Pretty cool stuff indeed. But, yeah, there we go. So that is the Haster Heteo hetero system hope i'm saying that right apologies for butchering the pronunciation but yeah there we go so there is the uh system we'll get a quick full lineup in its original uh, background now yeah so i, I liked um, the concept so yeah it's in a uh, relatively young planetary system located in a dwarf galaxy i like that concept so 950 stars barely 1200 i mean 950 stars that is a very small amount 
So this galaxy is very, very small. Barely a 1,200 light years in diameter drifting along the local group. So if we look carefully in the background itself, so we'll just close that now. There it is. You can see there's just the tiny little bit of galaxy there and then everything else is just dark. I like that. I think that's really cool. So if we get a lineup of all the objects now. So here we are. Uh, radius, make live. There we are. Let's uh, quickly zoom in on the stars once more. Here we go. So we've got the bow stars. We've got the yellow dwarf, the orange dwarf. Onto the planets. We've got the super. There's the super Jupiter object there. So that's pretty large. Then onto the uh, other planets. So if we go to uh, no, view, realistic, go to studio. So the line of all the planets. I think this one here is definitely my favorite. The Rockies. I like the green with the big ocean heavy world. Definitely a cool object there. Gas giant wise. Or I should say gas dwarf wise. That's my favorite looking one. Um, right there and yeah here is all of the other objects that are lined up so yeah there we go so that is this system done guys so yeah again massive thank you to the creator rxd for sending uh this in and yeah if you've got your own systems to send in make sure to join the join my discord server link in the description you can upload your systems um there for me to check out as well uh, expect hopefully expect more of these episodes i, I do want to get back into doing them a lot more often because i need to catch up a bit because i did episode 150 where i did like 10 or 11 in a, in one video but i still got a lot of catching up to do i've got stuff in private messages i need to get through still yeah i've just got a lot of stuff so expect more of these episodes hopefully um in the uh, near future for this month at least and yeah if that all said and done guys um hope everyone had a happy new year um as well and yeah, make sure you all stay safe out there. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.